Hi, welcome to the Narrowboat Painting and Training Centre. Um, been a little while waiting for this facility, but it's up and running now. So uh, I thought we'd get on with some how-to videos. I know there's a lot of people who've been waiting for us to do some more. Um, and one of the things you've been asking for is how do we coach line up and how do we go about getting that set out? So that's what I'll go through. Um, it's a fairly complex subject, really. Um, if you've got a handrail and then a border and then your main panel, it's getting those proportions right to make it look the best on your boat. So a few tips to start off with. Um, years ago, I was always told, try not to pay too much attention to where the windows and the apertures are in your boat. Look to see what's gonna look best on your boat as far as the lines are concerned, and then go back to see how that's gonna affect um, your windows, your doors, where the hinges are, that sort of thing. So there's a little bit to think about. Um, try to avoid, obviously, getting your coach line too close to the bottom of a window. It does then tend to make the window look like it's been underlined. So some of the measurements I'll give you now, um, you may want to just adjust very slightly depending on your boat and how you want to, um, the end product wants to look. So let's not make it overly complicated. Um, we do run a course in, in decoration and I generally do a fair bit on coach lining in that. Um, but we also do additional things like how to set out your bows, how to make decorative um, scallops on your hatches, all sorts of things, even barbershop poles for your swan's neck and so on. So there's a whole course uh, available um, and you can contact us through that if you want to. But let's get back to this. As a rule of thumb, you're looking for about four and a quarter inches um, roughly as, as a nice, that gives you a nice border at the top. Remember if you're framing things, the border at the bottom wants to be just very slightly um, deeper. Then if you stand away from the boat and look towards it, your eyes look down, your eye naturally narrows the bottom, it's looking straight at the top, so you get, although the bottom is actually slightly deeper, um, it gives the appearance of them both being the same. So I would normally start with around about four and a quarter inches, um, and I'll just mark that a couple of times, reasonable distance apart, um, and then I'd walk to the other end of the boat, or the other end of the panel which I was going to do, and then just put myself another reference point there. Um, it's nice to have indicators along the boat as to where you're going to go, but what I wouldn't do is put lots of marks and try and join them up. You'll find you'll end up with Christmas tree decorations, loads of loops, um, and it just won't look quite right. So once you put a couple of marks on, find the end of your tape. Now, I'm working on an undercoated surface. It's just the way we do it. We would prep the surface, then put our coach lines on, and then put the colours above and below the coach lines. It's not everybody's way of doing it, it's just the way we do it, and we find it seems to work for us. So it's important that the tape I use now is of a very high quality and leaves me a nice clean edge and uh, strong enough also to, to peel out once you've painted. This is Tessa Precision Tape, very, very good. Um, and one that we're, we've worked with for a long time now, it has a nice benefit, just picking my marks up, has the nice benefit of being able to pull very hard on the tape. You can see, and by pulling tight, it, you have a certain amount of stretch, you see the tape curl very slightly, um, and I can use that then just to pin that tape down. So that works nicely. By the time the things in the background, I'm going to get a cup of tea soon. I can hear the cup, cups rattling. So uh, there we go. So that's your first coach line on. Nice and simple. As I said, the bottom coach line needs to be just that a little bit deeper. So I've got four and a quarter. We don't need to go mad. Um, I'd go say four and a half. It's, it's just a little bit just for that focus. If you're going to go four and a half, um, little tip just makes life easier, you're not trying to look at the line. If you now go five and a half, 
and then your, your coach line comes down from that mark. So the gap underneath will still be four and a half. So I'll just pop that in there now. So again, just a couple of marks at five and a half here. Five and a half looks like it's going to sit nicely underneath the window, which is important again. And again, I'd walk up to the other end of the panel. I know I'm working on a short panel, but it works just the same. You can still do this method, even if you're both 70 feet long. The tape is of good quality. If your tape sagged over the whole length of your cabin side by just a few mil, don't start worrying about that. Your eye won't see it. It's not going to look like it's you know, a, a big dip. It will hardly be noticed. Um, that's why I say just put some indicators on, on there, but no more than that. It just gives you an idea, should you take a drop a little bit, um, that you can go back to that if you're not happy. But normally, put it on, pull it tight, snap it onto the side of the boat, and you're away. So that's got the top and bottom ones on. Now, if, let's say, you had a drain, we usually like to put a drop in there and separate the two panels so the water runs through the drain, down the side and away. If it goes through your coach line, dirty water, if it's a nice cream coach line, it might start to stain it after a while. So by doing it this way, it just means that we won't have that problem. So I'll put a drop in, because one of the things that people have asked for is not just how do you get them on, but how do you get the nice sharp corners? How's that done? So, we're there with this bit. What I'm going to do now is I'll just pick a distance, we'll assume that there's a drain and that's where we're going to work to. So if I come to three feet there, as I say, this would be normally just work to a drain or if you have a set of doors and you decided your panel was going to stop at the doors, or we would just take this distance back from the doors and then you put your drop in. I've marked that off the end there, just so I can get a, a bit of an idea. Now, this drop that I'm going to put in needs to be the same width as it is at the top. So, I'm just going to measure out here at four and a quarter, which was the, what I left at the top, and do the same at the bottom. Again, four and a quarter. And now we can put our uh, two lines in. Little things sometimes help. If you put your thumb in the middle of the tape and you're pulling hard, you'll often make it bend and sometimes it'll distort. I'll just keep your fingers on the roll so they're not applying pressure to the tape. Put it on, pull tight and just run it down. And again, the same on the other one. Again, use your fingers, keep the tape nice and straight, run it down, bit of tension, there you go. So that's those. You're going to wonder probably how we get rid of the, the bit in the middle. Carefully with a sharp blade, so you're not cutting through the paint, you can just run your blade through there, top and bottom, and now you can peel that piece back. Now when you coach the line up, always do the horizontals first, verticals follow, um, and you'll see why. When you come to take these tapes off in, in time after you've finished your um, painting stage, you, you need to remember or need to have a very good idea of which way around the tapes are. So you're not there scratching away, because these tapes are almost buried in paint. You're not there scratching away trying to make it work or trying to find the edges. So, horizontals, then verticals, and then when we come to make these corners, you can pull the vertical down. We've already cut the tape, and my pencil marked in each corner as I did it. So we just hold the, the blade on there, take it off, run the tape back up, so we've got a lovely sharp corner. Just run your nail across just to make sure that the there's no gaps for paint to disappear into. And there you go, there's your corners. Nice and simple way of doing it. It's 
So at the bottom, what we need to do is just go up, take the tape, off there, run it back down, and there you go. Just always make sure, these are like little bridges where the tapes overlap. So rub them down so the paint, when you paint, doesn't track behind them. So again, we'll just finish this off. There's the tapes, back down. Just remember those bridges, just close them up. And there we go. Last ones, we we'll take down. Take it off, run it back up. Okay. Always just keep in the habit, although this is a demonstration, I'm just, I'm always in the habit of just making sure, nothing worse, you take all those tapes off and then the paint's bled behind and it just doesn't look as you were hoping it was going to. So there's a quick demonstration of how to get your coach lines on. Now what we would do, obviously this would normally be a prepared surface, so what we do now is we paint alternate days, the main coach panels and the surrounds. Once we've built up the gloss coat, the big day comes, the reveal, and we take these tapes out. Nice and easy because we know that all the horizontals come out first, sorry, all the verticals out first, all the horizontals to follow, so it's all done. And then you need to paint that coach line in. Now to do that, Again, this tape has a really fine, clean edge. So if this was our coach line, all we'd do is just tape up right on the line like that, all the way along, round the boat, using the same technique for the corners. And then you just, with these tapes removed, you just paint in the centre. So it's a fairly simple process. It's the way we do it. I'm not saying by any means it's the only way or the right way, it's how we do all our boats. Um, and if you follow those simple rules, you'll have a boat coach lined up um, and hopefully works quite nicely. I think you can see that by just giving that a little bit of distance either side of the window, it's just set it off quite nicely. I haven't tried to position the window in the middle of the tape, that would look wrong. Um, this one would be too far down, the, the surround at the top would be too great. Um, if you're wondering why I've got windows in, we do window fitting courses as well. Um, so that you can actually come here, we'll teach you how to remove it. So if you've got a leaky window for instance, and it's been bugging you, and it's one of those things but you're just not quite sure, you can come here, we'll show you how to take the windows out, how to address the paintwork, because if you've got a leaky window, you've often got a bit of rust, we'll do all that for you, show you how to do it, take your windows out, change your drill tap and refit your window using all the, the tapes and the, the um, sealants and everything that we use. Um, pretty much every boat we do, well, every boat we do, we take the windows and portholes out. That also goes for all your fixtures and fittings. So all of those things are included in this course so that we can actually show you how to do all those things. Um, and if you're having a new set of windows, often the fitting cost is really high. Um, our other workshop is available. You can always come do the course um, and fit your own windows and give yourself that time to address those paintwork issues. But that's another course and we'll perhaps do a little bit on that on a future video. Thanks very much for watching.